At the break, we were speaking of Lee Anthony's efforts to convince his sister Casey of her need to just tell Cindy, their mother, where Kaylee Anthony was. That resisting, fighting, just not giving the information was counterproductive and would ultimately result in the same ending regardless. That whether or not Casey did it, or Lee did it, or the police did it, that they were all going to see Kaylee that night. However, in a pattern that is repeated throughout this case, when Casey Anthony's lie can no longer stand, when she can't get out of the corner that she has painted herself into, when her back is up against the wall, and when the stakes increase, what does Casey Anthony do? What does she do? Casey Anthony comes up with a new, a bigger, and a better lie. It is at this point, with her back against the wall, with her brother telling her that the result of this disagreement that you are having with our mother will end in our mother's favor, that Casey Anthony first says these words. Kaylee was kidnapped by the babysitter. The babysitter that nobody has ever seen, that nobody ever saw, that her parents didn't know, that her brother had never heard of. Kaylee has been kidnapped by Zenaida Fernandez Gonzalez. And upon hearing this information, all Kaylee's Uncle Lee could think of was nothing. He goes into vapor lock. He can't believe his ears. He has to focus now on solving this problem. And even though Cindy Anthony, the evidence will show, had to realize that her daughter had lied and lied and lied and lied for 31 days about where she was, about where Kaylee was, about what they were doing. At that moment, Cindy Anthony had to believe her daughter. Although her first response, according to the testimony that you'll hear from Lee Anthony, is, what did you do? Her first response directed at Casey Anthony, what did you do? And at that point, this story, the evidence will show, had its desired effect to take the focus off of Casey Anthony. Her mother was in her face. Her brother is in her face. How do you get out of that? You tell another lie. Cindy Anthony goes into an all-out panic. At this point, 911 again, the third time on the phone, and you will hear Cindy Anthony's panic 911 call to the Orange County Sheriff, the third call she made that day. And this time she is hysterical.
Cindy Anthony wants Casey Anthony to speak to the dispatcher on the phone. You can hear the exchange. And then you can hear Casey Anthony get on the phone like nothing. With the attitude, well, why do you people want to talk to me? I don't want to talk to them. During this call, Cindy Anthony tells the dispatcher from the Orange County Sheriff's Office that her granddaughter was kidnapped. I cannot find my granddaughter. Something is wrong. It smells like there's been a dead body in the damn car. As you will learn, as this trial unfolds, the Orange County Sheriff's Office, as do all police agencies, keep a almost second-by-second second accounting of their response to a call. You will learn that the first officer that arrived at the Anthony residence was Corporal Rendon Fletcher. Now, Corporal Fletcher's Dispatch was to the second call. So he's not completely apprised until he gets there of the seriousness of this call. Eventually, after learning from Lee Anthony and Cindy Anthony and Casey Anthony in the home that Kaylee is missing and this Zenaida Fernandez Gonzalez has Kaylee, the Orange County Sheriff's Office begins to gather information about locating this person. And one of the things that is told to them by Casey Anthony is that Zanny, or Zanida, lives at the Sawgrass Apartments, which is off of Conway Road in Orlando. So deputies with the Orange County Sheriff's Office ask Casey to show them the last place she saw her daughter 31 days ago. And she gets into the car with Adriana Acevedo, a deputy with the Orange County Sheriff. Brendan Fletcher, the corporal that first responded to the call, follows in case he needs to do follow-up with the people <laughs> at the Sawgrass Apartments. And they drive in to the location at the direction of Casey Anthony. She points out the apartment where she last saw her daughter, Kaylee, and says, that's where I dropped Kaylee off on June 9th, 2008. Rendon Fletcher finds somebody with this apartment complex, somebody in management or maintenance, and it's determined that while this is July, now 16th probably, 2008, nobody's lived in that apartment since February 2008. The prior occupants were evicted. So when these deputies from the Orange County Sheriff's Office return to the Anthony home with Casey and no Kaylee, what does Cindy Anthony do? She continues to insist that something be done. That Casey is lying, that somebody needs to arrest her. She needs to tell me where Kaylee is. 